Hello, welcome to Keith's Pie Tutorials. Today, um, it's not so much of a tutorial, but uh, I've been working on a project for the past couple of months, two or three months. Uh, you may see me tweet about it. I've um, now got a bird box up in my shed with a Raspberry Pi camera in it. The Raspberry Pi is actually in the shed. I've um, routed the cables from the bird box into the shed, so it's, um, it was relatively easy to get power to it and to keep it nice and dry. Um, so what it's doing at the moment is uh, it's streaming um, video from inside the bird box. Now unfortunately um, I've had no birds moving. Uh, I did try and get it up fairly early in the year. But I think it um, got installed in about February and I've been working on the code um, since then. So I've got a box up and I haven't really touched that since. So the reason I wanted to tell you about this is uh, I've been working on documentation and um, it surprised me how much was involved in it. I've actually learned quite a bit. I started off with um, a worksheet from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which was very good, which takes you through the basics of putting the camera in the bird box and streaming the, um, the video stream through to a service called Ustream. And it was using the Raspberry Vid program. Um, now I'll come on to what I've done with it later, but as well as the, the, the streaming aspect of it, is I had to get a an infrared LED inside the bird box. Now, because I, the bird box was set up and I didn't want to disturb it once it was installed, uh, I wanted to make sure I could control the brightness of the LED. And I wanted to make sure it was nice and bright and run it off 5 volts. So I wired it up to a transistor and I wired the transistor into a GPIO port. So I could now control the infrared LED through uh, GPIO. Um, for a transistor, so that was new for me. Uh, the next thing, I added a couple of temperature sensors in it. So there's, uh, they're loading the temperature data to the Pi, and then I found a service called ThingSpeak, which allows you to publish data to ThingSpeak. And um, I then call that data back down later to add to an overlay on the live video stream. So. When you're watching the video stream, you can actually see the live temperature, which I thought was quite cool. And I've got another little project I'm working on where I just display the temperature in my kitchen on a sense app. Um, so I, I might show you that another time as well. So I'd, I'm just going to show you the documentation I've got and I'll, I'll run through where it is, um, how I did it and such like. So, so this is my website. It's pi-tutorials.co.uk. Um, to get to the bird box information, just put forward slash bird box at the end there. So, www.pytutorials, sorry, pi-tutorials.co.uk forward slash bird box. That gets you this page here. Um, so there's a bit of a description. Um, if we scroll down here, we've got the live stream, which you can see is running there um, when it starts up I think it's been a bit slow because I'm actually doing a screen capture but um, you can see I've got the infrared LED in there it's got a text overlay with a bit description so uh, the live time and also the um, live temperature so it's not actually streaming at the moment but I think that is due to me doing screen capture um, I've also got two temperature sensors in there, so um, this is the temperature from Figspeak here, figspeak.com, and it's embedded on the site, and you can query all the temperatures here, so you can see the latest temperature was 12.25 degrees on the 1st of May at 8.29. Um, so that's the external temperature, which is a, a thermometer behind the bird box, it's sort of sandwiched in a it's got free airflow, but it's in between the back of the bird box and the shed to keep it directly out of the sun. Now I've also got a temperature sensor on um, the, I've got, I made a little um, interface board so I can plug the temperature sensors and um, the IR LED into, into the pie easily. And I've got a temperature sensor on that interface board as well. So it's directly on top of the pie, which is inside a little Chinese takeaway box inside the shed so you can see it's quite a bit hotter, it got 
43 degrees today, um, about half past five. So that's that's the main page, and this section here shows all the documentation I've got. So I, uh, I've separated it out. First of all, there's the build instructions, um, which I actually documented how I, I put the bird box together. Again, a bit of an introduction. All the bits I used, um, a bit on the location. A lot of this this page here, this build is um, really duplicated from the Raspberry Pi worksheet. They've done a very good worksheet on um, using uh, on streaming from a bird camera. So. The first thing you have to do is to adjust the focus on the Raspberry Pi camera, and they're sold as a fixed focus. So there's three blobs of glue. They're quite easy. It was a lot easier to pick out than I thought it would be actually, but it took a few minutes. Um, so I had to pick out the glue from the camera, soldered up the IR LED, and then made a mount, a 3D printed mount, which um, uh, there's a link in here somewhere so you can go and download that from Think um, from Thingiverse. Um, that's the interface board I made. So we've got a transistor with the requisite resistors. So the, um, the LED plugs in here. That's the onboard temperature sensor and then the external temperature sensor uses three of these terminals here. The fourth one is not used. Um, and that just plugs onto the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Model B here. Um, I go through setting up the camera focus. So I'll put the, the camera in the box. Um, and you don't want to focus on the bottom of the box because they're obviously going to build a nest and the birds will be a bit higher up. So I, I put something in the box to give myself something to focus on. Um, you can see the LED is soldered onto a bit of a wire, quite a long wire, and I'll cut it down later. Mounted the camera into my um, 3D printed mount. Notched the box to run the wire out. You can see um, here I, I put two buttons on the back of the box, so that allowed me to hang the thermometer in, in the back here, in between the shed and the back of the box. Fed the wires through. Uh, just covered everything in there in hot glue, essentially. I didn't want it corroding. And then um, screwed it all together, screwed it shut. Um, inside the shed, I've got the Raspberry Pi. I fixed, I fixed a um, Chinese takeaway box to the um, side of the shed, and it's all just sitting in there with the, um, the cable going out to the Pi camera. So that, this was a two meter long cable. It was um, too long in the end, so I just and I fold it up, but it works perfectly well. And the IR LED wires come out the side here. Um, I've got a, and to get the internet to the shed, I used an Apple Airport Express, which allows you to extend wireless networks and it comes with an ethernet port. So the Pi is connected by ethernet to the wireless to the Apple Airport Express, and then the Airport Express negotiates the um, connection back into my house and it works very well actually and power so the power just goes to the socket fortunately I've got power in my shed so that, that was the hardware you know there's, there's lots of good information in there then the electronics so I te uh, talk you through the interface board the circuits I use for the transistor um, to power the infrared LED and also how the two temperature sensors are, are wired up. They're, they're quite easy, they just use one um, GPIO port. You can chain quite a few of these together and um, they just need a, a free, free volt free connection. Um, the data line's pulled up high as well with a resistor and then the ground as well. So three connections each and you can chain them together and later on um, you can I'll take in the codes, I'll take you through how you connect to them. So that was the electronics. And then there's various software guides which take you through all the code. So I've used 
Python free throughout. So infrared LED is a very simple script using GPIO zero, which is a brilliant library. Uh, makes it so simple. So I'm not going to run through it here, but um, I added a bit of extra. Um, I added a parser in, so when I call the code, I can set the value of the pulse width modulation on the command line. So I don't have to edit any variables inside the code. So that's the LED. And then I'll take you through logging the data to ThinkSpeak. So I use, um, to get the temp data from the temperature sensors, I used, um, there's a very good guide from the Raspberry Pi Spire, Matt Hawkins. So uh, this is pretty much his code, so uh, I need to give him credit where credit's due. Um, that worked perfectly. Um, and then the ThingSpeak, I, I found a ThingSpeak library, which allowed me to upload data and use the requests library, which is um, very good, very good way of um, sending get requests um, to various services. I did have a bit of trouble installing that. Um, it, it needs to be installed with, with PIP and depending on the version of um, Python you got, you might have 3.2 or you might have 3.4 depending whether you're running Wheezy or Jesse. Um, so there's two different commands there to install the ThingSpeak library from PIP. And then um, I just write a bit of code to up upload uh, my temperature data to ThingSpeak. So that's the temperature data. And then stream into Ustream. So there's two ways to do it. There's Raspberry Vid, which is exactly the same way as the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, showed how to do it. The thing that works very well, but with Raspi Vid, it's very, um, I don't believe you can add live um, text overlays. It's once the code is, once the program's running, it, it's running, you can't edit it without exiting and restarting. So um, it, it's got a few downsides and it, um, uses FFmpeg to stream it to Ustream. Now there is FFmpeg in, in the Ras, Raspbian um, repos, but you need to compile it yourself. Now it's not hard, it just takes a bit of time. It takes a few hours to do that, so um, it might be worth doing that, leaving it overnight. But um, the instructions, them six lines of code there, just on the command line, works perfectly. I've done it a few times now. It seems to work every time. So there's no issues compiling that yourself. Um, you obviously need to create a Ustream account. Um, get some, uh, you need to get your um, encoder settings to get your keys. So it uploads it to your own channel. And there's a bash script which calls um, Raspi vid, which is this. This is all it is here. So that's a raspy vid. I do a horizontal and vertical flip of the camera. Um, time is zero, so it's infinite. The width and height in pixels of the screen and the frame rate, 25 frames per second and a bit rate of um, 500,000 bytes a second, 50 kilobytes a second. And then that just gets piped through to FFmpeg with a bit of metadata in there. Um, as flash video and that's um, where our keys go in which we previously obtained from Ustream. I've taken them out here but you'll need to put your own keys in here. So that worked well but like I said you can't you can't do much with it so I worked quite well on a Pi, I wanted a 100% Pi camera solution. I didn't quite get there, I did get there but the problem was if the, if the stream went down I couldn't get it restarted, so um, I had to um, package this up in a, in a bash script. So I've got some Python code 
which the, the very simple, this is the equivalent of the previous um, Raspberry Vid code. So it, there's more code there. This is then called with this, this um, Pi camera gets piped out to standard output and then we call this in a bash script which pipes it into FFmpeg exactly as before. And then I later take you through how we build on this to add the um, the annotation, how we can add the annotation, and then later on how to add the temperature. So that's in a separate bit here, adding live temperature data to the overlay. So here, rather than just take the temperature from the Raspberry Pi, I wasn't because I already had a script pulling the temperature off the Pi and uploading it to ThingSpeak. I didn't want to be writing another script to pull the temperature off the pie again. I wasn't sure what happened if it happened at exactly the same time. So I decided to pull the data down from ThingSpeak and then upload it um, into the pie camera um, text overlay just to make sure there was some conflicts. Now, the ThingSpeak library I use didn't seem to allow me to pull data back down so I've edited it and I, so I've got my own ThingSpeak library here essentially which um, is all on my github site so um, and once again this is called so this is the Python file using Pi camera we import Pi camera here it outputs it to standard out it gets the temperature sensor data. There's um, a few um, timers going to um, get the temperature sensor data every, well, whatever period you want. I think I get it every two minutes. And it um, adds it as an annotation. And um, so that's pretty much it. And all the code is on the GitHub site, which is here. So it's all there for you. So I just wanted to let you know that that was there really um, and explain what I've done. And um, it, you know, there's quite a bit of information there. So I'm hoping it's going to be helpful to you. Well, that took a bit longer than I was expecting. Um, sorry if that dragged out a bit, but I did, um, I did want to get that over to you. Going forwards, so there's a couple of little bits I've want to do but it will probably take me a while to get there. I want to add some motion detection to the camera. Um, the Raspberry Pi camera has a, a nice little built-in um, motion detection feature which doesn't take up too much processing power so I want to get my head around that and then once it's detect motion um, send out a tweet um, to let me um, know that there's something going on um, so I can have a look and you know see what's going on so that should be quite good but um, you know it depends on time it will take me quite a while to sort that out so I just wanted to get um, the bulk of this project out um, and hope, hopefully you'll find it useful so cheers for now bye